What happened last week on Many Realms? I am the captain of the guard, and we are forming a group, and we are going to find them. It's clear that Elgriff can't get us into the manor, and the manor probably has what we need. Am I fired? Like a little. I will be taking Mateo with me as well. I don't trust him in the city without me. And you're gonna sit tight while I fix this mess. I am leaving. And you leave Tower Hill. Hey, I'm Jillian. I'm playing Anisha. It's good to be here. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm playing Mateo, and it's good to be here. My name is Eli. I'm playing Olivet, and it's good to be here. My name is Jory. I'm playing Juniper. It's good to be here. I'm Jesse. I'm the DM, and I hope they get Tom Holland to play me in the movie of Many Realms. merchant wagons slowly rolls down one of the winding dirt roads that cross the thicket. Behind the caravan, the walled village of Tower Hill begins to shrink into the distance, its familiar flickering light strikingly absent. Then the thicket swallows you up. The foliage presses so close against the edge of the road that it feels like you are riding through a tunnel. The dense canopy overhead blocks all but a few stray shafts of sunlight. Though it is barely noon, a twilight gloom suffuses the air. The four of you sit inside the fourth wagon. I think maybe everyone can take a turn and describe what their character is doing, or if they're saying anything, or how they're feeling. Anisha's really conflicted about whether or not they should just be taking everything in, or if they should be meditating and trying to calm down. <laughs> Olivet is both surveying the forest for any threats and kind of just like thinking of ways to enter a conversation with these strangers. Uh, Mateo, uh, is the back of the, the wagon open? The back of the wagon has a, a small opening, yeah. Okay, uh, well, I guess his happy place would be, uh, as you described it, walk, watching uh, Tower Hill fade into the distance. And this would be his first adventure outside, especially at the young age that he is, so he's probably taken in the sights a bit. What age is that again? Uh, uh, 16, 15, 15, it was 15, sorry, 15. Great. So Juniper, what is Juniper doing? She's probably a bit nervous. I think she's probably doing the looking out the window thing. You know, I guess there's windows. Is Kelly Clarkson playing? Yeah, Kelly Clarkson <laughs> is playing. It's playing um, Breakaway. Yeah. Yeah, so she's probably, you know, hasn't been out of the walls before in her whole life. So like looking out the window, probably nervously fiddling with her earrings. Not currently too interested in the people around her so much as the world outside. So those earrings, those yeah. are the earrings that your mother bought for you from Granny's stall the night before when the merchant caravan rolled into Tower Hill. And you had gone straight from the chandlery when Keon sort of publicly fired and humiliated you to the merchant wagons to sort of uh, enlist in this quest. And your mother had run up as the horses were being hitched to the wagons as you were settling all your things in. And she had reached her hand into the wagon and pressed those earrings into your palms. And she said, Juniper, you're leaving? Yeah, I think I, I think I should go help. Your apprenticeship with Keon What's to become of it? Um, hopefully. I ho if we can go fix this, it'll go on as normal. I see. But the dangers out there in the thicket, you have no way of defending yourself. How do I know you'll be okay? I, like, look at this ragtag group of people, <laughs> um, and I lied through my teeth. <laughs> I think I'm in good company. I think we can take care of ourselves. Promise me, Juniper, that this has nothing to do with your grandmother. I, I promise. It's all about 
getting my apprenticeship back on track. You'll return as soon as this is resolved. Yeah, of course. I'll be waiting. And flashback. Um, yeah, and you're you're fiddling with these earrings that, again, are sort of like little metal gold hoops that are wrapped with that green wire and a sort of stripey dealy. Um, you are going to be on the road for some time. Um, do any of you break your heavy internal monologues to say anything to one another? I think all of us really interested by this face tattoo, actually. And is kind of just like staring at you, staring at Juniper very uncomfortably for a very long time. Uh, Part of why I'm looking so intently out the window, by the way. <gasps> all of it, you know that um, this is some kind of family trait of Juniper's because her mother, Azalea, has the same kind of tattoo. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that you're old enough to remember Juniper's grandmother, who was a woman named Violet. She had a multitude of plant-based tattoos all along her body, including some up on her face as well. Okay. Um, sorry, what was your name? Was it <laughs> Jan? Jan? Juniper. Okay. Juniper is my name. Juniper, got it. What, what's with the, uh, this whole ordeal on the, on the, on the, on the little face? You got. I feel like I'm a little, like, annoyed with these questions about this tattoo. And the word ordeal. Yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> but I think, like, in general, I'm sure I've, like, been dealing with this my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, so I, like, saw and I say, it's a whole thing with wherever my grandmother came from. Tattoos are a big deal. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> She just, like, doesn't know how to react to that and then awkwardly stares out the window again. <laughs> Where are we going? Okay, I'm realizing you're probably all looking at me. Um, the first answer is mostly that I don't know. The second answer would be that my guess is probably Willow Run, but we can ask Barf. Barf. <laughs> Barf. <laughs> yeah, we should ask Barf. <laughs> We can, <laughs> we can ask Barth. Uh, at that moment, actually, Barth, with a T-H, <laughs> like the philosopher, hops into your wagon. It's going slowly enough that um, it's no trouble for her to just get out of her kind of wagon and walk alongside. Again, she is a stern-looking halfling woman. She sells uh, dried foods, preserved meats, salted goods etc. And uh, she was the leader of the caravan that came into Tower Hill. She squats down on a crate and she says, uh, how are you folks doing? Looking a little quiet in here. Do you know where we're going? <laughs> I wouldn't be much of a caravan leader if I didn't, would I? Uh, well, we're headed straight south to Willow Run. Haha! -ha. Sorry. Is everything okay? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, straight south to Willow Run. Uh, I don't know if any of you know it. It'll be about a two days journey. Halfway between, just heading due south from here, there is a rooming house. We'd like to try to get there before nightfall, spend the night, and make it to Willow Run the next day. In an ideal world, that wouldn't be any kind of problem, but as you know, we were forced to leave on pretty short notice this morning. Um, the wagons are still not completely repaired. We did our best, but we were on a short time frame, and uh, we had ourselves a busy night, didn't we? So we're moving slower than I'd like, and I'm worried that if anything trips us up, we might have to travel a little bit through nightfall. And uh, again, I don't know how much y'all know, but traveling through the thicket after sun goes down, probably the worst idea in the world. I'll tell you, uh, Augment's feeling a lot better. That's at least partially thanks to you for helping him get some healing service as soon as we arrived. His arm's still giving him a twitch, but he can help us uh, protect the caravan if we need it. Granny uh, hasn't been talking too much. So, it's the best we can hope for. Where are y'all intended to go? Uh, oh god, you're all looking at me again. Uh, we... We don't know. We're just looking for someone. We have no idea where to start. Uh, I mean, we'll figure it out. It's highly classified. 
You're looking for someone you don't know where they are. So, Willow Run then? Willow Run then. Okay. Um, we're hopefully gonna stop, maybe take a little bit of lunch in soon. If you need anything, I'm up front. Thanks, Barth. Barth uh, hops out of the wagon and back to the front caravan, um, which suddenly stops with a, a sharp jolt, and you're sort of rocked and thrown about a little bit. Uh, you can hear Barth curse loudly from the front of the wagon. Uh, Olivet is going to get out and see what the problem is. Sure. I'm going to pull out my new dagger and rush outside. The other two? I'm just going to go look. Yeah, I will peer out of the caravan. Sure. You can see that down the pathway ahead, the road looks a bit brighter than the road you've been traveling along so far. You can see that at each side of the road, maybe 20 or 30 feet apart, are tall sort of street lights that each have a um, glass fixture, bulb, dome, and inside of those are lit candles. Um, you take a look at the ones closest to you, left and right, and you can see that these are, in fact, sympathy candles. In front of you, um, the reason for the stop is clear. The horses have knocked over a long, white, wooden ladder that has clattered to the path in front of you, and now a man is hanging for dear life from one of these street lamps. Oh. Um, are the sympathy candles, they're, they're working? The ones in front of you, heading further down the path, are lit, and that's why the road down there is lighter. Mm -hmm. The ones behind you, of course, are out. Okay, so this guy was, was lighting the candles. I'll walk up to the ladder, and I'll grab it, and go to put it up, and I don't know, be like, I think you dropped something, mister. All right, you grab the ladder. Barth, of course, had just taken one second to survey the situation, was of the same mind and helps you grab the ladder and prop it up and uh, awkwardly the man manages to sort of swing himself back onto it and clamber down. Um, he grabs the ladder from you and begins to fold it a couple times so that it can collapse and he attaches it to the knapsack that he wears and he says, uh, well thank you very much. That was uh, not going to be a great afternoon, but now it's an okay afternoon and I appreciate that. I hold out my hand like this, which is uh, palm up, as if to say, give me something. Ah. I'm going to put his hand down gently and say, what were you doing out here? Uh, well, I'm sure you guys are coming from uh, up north, so you probably saw or heard about what happened at Tower Hill. Yeah, we heard. Well, so all the sympathy candles gone out, and the roads are in a right state, let me tell you. I've never seen it this bad, not in all my years. This is like a middle-aged man. He's pretty, like, uh, buff. He has, like, a sort of brown pompadour. Um, and he says, so, first thing in the morning, I came out and I started lighting what I could to make the way safe as possible again. But since the sympathy candles are not magical anymore, the light's going to need to be changed a lot more frequently. I don't know how we're going to deal with that, but... I figured this was the least I could do. Oh, um, my name's Boffin. I'm a lamplighter. Boffin the lamplighter. Anisha has retreated back into the wagon and is feeling pretty terrible <laughs> to know that uh, the, uh, the impact of the exploding candle has already been causing people uh, distress? How, how far into the day are we? Um, it's about noon now. Okay. I want to do my patented awkward, like, pat him on the back a little <laughs> too hard and say, thank you very much, Boffin. You're doing great. Yeah, um, can I ask where you folks are headed? For now, Willow Run. Oh, that's a far away. Where are you from? Oh, all around, you know, us lamplighters, we just kind of patrol the routes as we do and uh, check on the sympathy candles. I don't call one place home in particular. Willow Run's a beautiful place, though. Yeah, we've, I think most of us haven't been there. How much do they pay in this racket, mister? Well, it's arguably a volunteer position. I receive a small monthly stipend uh, in order to maintain, like, rooms at the various inns I cross and little morsels of food here and there, but it's really about making sure that the thicket is as safe as possible for all who wish to cross it. 
Why, are you interested? I could get you a little junior lamplighter form. I'm okay, mister, thanks. <laughs> All right. Not everyone feels the call, and that's okay. <laughs> now, I saw you were moving down the road quite slow. Yeah. Are you sure you're going to be able to make it somewhere safe in time for nightfall? We're not sure about that, no. Mm, that's unfortunate. You're well armed? Greatly. Yeah. Bad enough. Why you ask? Well, I just wouldn't want to see anything befall you, of course. Staying out past sundown's guaranteed to bring you a bit of trouble, I think. What kind of trouble have you seen out here? You know, monsters, horrible creatures, uh, sirens. Actually, I just saw one not too long ago, a night or two ago. How do you how do you deal with that, Mister? I mean, You're no one here all by yourself. I keep a crossbow on me, and frankly, I've been lucky. The lamplighters like to go out in pairs, of course, so we can watch each other's backs. But after this horrible catastrophe, there were so many roads that needed relighting. I volunteered to make it up to Tower Hill by myself, and so far I've been okay. I think I'm only about an hour or two out. I've made good time, but the sirens. They don't take crossbow bolts. They don't take a dagger through the chest. They just float and flicker. Makes your skin crawl. Well, I think at this point we're too late to turn around. Yeah, I'd, I'd guess so. So stay on your guard. Thank you, Boffin. I will say, because none of you asked, and I think it's quite interesting. I did see a siren two nights ago. Plain as day with my own eyes. What did she look like? Thank you. <gasps> She was tall, pale, she had very long fingers, and hair like a lion. Or, I don't know what a lion is, because they haven't been invented yet. <laughs> really big hair, like a drag queen. <laughs> drag queens, invented before lions. Or drag queens. I feel like they probably have drag queens in fantasy medieval Europe. <laughs> um, she had big crazy hair, and she was singing. Everyone I heard who talks about sirens always has a story that's a little bit different, but I have to say, um, I think this one might have been sort of like, um, like a guardian angel. Why is that? Well, they have a certain way of, uh, entrancing people and getting you to follow them around or do what they tell you. There's some kind of mysticism to it. And I was making my way. I was trying not to crash for more than an hour at a time because I wanted to keep moving. It's not wise to stay still in the thicket if you can help it. And I was hoofing it overnight to make it up here. One of them appeared and, and sang to me and I followed the song. I mean, I felt like I had to. And once the sun broke and I looked back, I realized she'd steered me right around a big old patch of swamp that had sprung up. Hmm. If I hadn't followed her song, I would've been up to my neck in muck faster than a Toad in a toad race. That one. <laughs> uh, well, Boffin, it sounds like you just were lucky and ran into a pretty lady. <laughs> Wish we could all be so lucky, eh? Yeah, mister, um, I don't know. This sounds like a tall tale. I don't mean to be too presumptuous or anything, but if my job was walking around in the forest lighting candles in a scary place all day, I think that I might start to get to seeing things that aren't there either. I mean, what have you ever heard? Catch, you ever heard of anything that doesn't die from a dagger or crossbow bolt? That just doesn't happen. Olivet is uncomfortable now. And says, when you get to Tower Hill, you, uh, you go to the rabbit cleaver. You treat yourself. Just gets back in the wagon. Who are, are you paying for my... <laughs> no, <laughs> but there's nowhere else for you to stay. And so... give the tavern some of whatever you're drinking. You don't believe me, boy? Not for a minute, sir. Oh, you might be sorry about that. I hope you have some time to rethink what I've said. Is that a threat, sir? I'm, I'm only 15 years of age. No. <laughs> Captain, you should arrest this man. Oh, Captain is in the back of the wagon, cold, pale as a ghost. He just looks at you and he says, I know you're a little young. You probably haven't been out on these roads before. Let me tell you, whatever you think you know, whatever you think you'll expect, it's gonna be just a little bit different. Okay, is he like super cryptic? Or like, no, he's just like, 
you think it's weird? Weird shit happens out here. Like, I imagine, like, his eyes went red for a second kind of deal. No, <laughs> they just stayed boffin colored. <laughs> what color are boffin's uh, eyes? Pantone boffin hazel. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Mateo's, uh, you know, especially with the captain gone, like, he's a little... Uh, probably getting to thinking, uh, um, okay, this, he's probably pretty spooked. You better keep that dagger close. I keep it close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you best be on your way. You don't want to slow down, especially if you're hoping to get to Willow Run in one piece. Uh, I stretch out my hand, palm up, yeah, with the absence yeah. of the captain. <laughs> so, Fair. Say, mister, I sure helped you have a buy-in there. He reaches into his knapsack and gives you a fresh candle. Oh, well, thanks, mister. All right. Maybe I'll think about the cause of the future, mister. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> And he um, moves down the road to the next lamp, sets up his ladder, and starts lighting. All right. When you get back to the caravan, I will give you a rapier, and I'll give you <laughs> both daggers. Okay. Sweet. Anything else to say as you all get back in the caravan? I'm like a little shook. I'm pretty. I think I'm pretty superstitious. So I say. I do not think that Siren was trying to help him. I don't know what it was trying to do. I'm. I don't trust that one bit. Yeah, you've probably, all of you have at least heard rumors of, like, a, a collection of creatures that are referred to as sirens that usually are sort of, like, lady-shaped magical beings. Aren't all women lady-shaped magical <laughs> beings? <laughs> But, but no, seriously, you all, you've all probably heard at least a little bit about sirens, and you've all probably heard something different about sirens. I'd say Captain Alvera probably has the most intel since she uh, is in a position to talk to just about everyone mm -hmm. who comes in or out of Tower Hill. Yeah, I, I am inclined to believe Boffin, and I think maybe we should speed up this caravan as best we can. I nod. Um, is there any... I guess there's nothing we can do while it's going to help get there faster besides magics that none of us have. Yeah, and I don't know that any of you have any, like, none of you took a wheel right, so <laughs> it's a little bit rough. Um, and I mean, it is like a rough ride. The tarp over the top of the wagon is, like, ripped open and, like, lots of wind and, like, fallen twigs and leaves, like, plop in from time to time, and the wheels kind of click-clack like someone stuck a playing card in their sixth-grade bicycle. Um, <laughs> it's like a, it's a crummy uber XL of a, of a caravan. Um, but you get back on your way. Mateo hops in a minute later, um, holding a candle. Where did you get that? Well, that's super hidden away. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Did you bring, um, your candle? No. Okay. I want to keep it safe. In your orphan shack. Even, I feel like, I feel like what I'd be doing now, the thought towards the candle would be, it's not gone. You know, I know it's not burning, so a little bit of uh, self-delusion, perhaps. But, sure. Uh, yeah, I think I would have put it back between the, the bricks. For the record, of course, the candle that Boffin gave you is a mundane candle. Yes. Um, he's just kind of, re I think he's probably replacing, or just kind of leaving the sympathy candles there because you'd rather not waste them in case there is a chance to restore them. I mean, he doesn't know, like, what the plan is, but at least a mundane candle, if you use it, you use it. It's about... An hour and a half later, when this time the wagon rolls to a gentle stop, but Barth is still swearing up at the front in her wagon. Um, I pop out again. This time it is a lot clearer what the problem is. The road passes over a deep valley. The trees grow so tall and so thick in this valley that it's almost like you're looking out over an ocean of vegetation lower than you. At the edge of this hill, you can see that it kind of spreads out like a second layer of the forest. A bridge crosses this sea of vegetation, but it's been raised. It's a drawbridge and it's drawn up. The wagon cannot proceed when the bridge is vertical. Next to the bridge, there is a large, kind of curiously shaped hill covered in moss and strange sort of colorful ferns and grasses poking out of it. It's almost sort of um, like a ziggurat, like those stepped pyramids. All right, so we got to get that bridge down. Is And there's no lever, or presumably this ziggurat-shaped thing is covering it. 
Tell me what you want to do. I want to tear at the moss. Okay, it's like a huge... This hill is huge. Oh, oh. Um, I say huge. To better describe the scenario, the wagon is stopped, like, right at the front of this bridge. You can definitely... You haven't taken a look at, like, what the mechanism is or what's going on. And then, say, about um, 60 or 70 feet off the road, there's a clearing where this big hill is standing up, if mm-hmm. that makes more sense. Barth turns as you all get out, including... Um, Ogman and Granny, she says, well, we'll need to get the, uh, what's the word, the crank in order to lower this bridge. You know how these toll houses work, or I guess maybe you don't. They keep the crank put away nighttime, and if you want to get across, you got to pay the piper, and they'll bring it out and lower it for you. I don't see the toll house anywhere, though. Can I try to just, like, slash the chain of the bridge? Sure. You draw your axe, and Barth says, What in the seven hells do you think you're doing? We're in a rush here. We are trying to get somewhere before nightfall. Do you know what happens if you cut that chain? The bridge falls. All the way. It's not going to stay supported if you just cut the chains that are holding it up. It's just going to plummet into this valley here. Uh, So unless you want to kind of skitch down that and do a sweet flip, (laughs) I'd recommend you find the crank. (laughs) <laughs> um, where is the, what do you mean there's no, um, like a toll booth or something? Yeah, usually a little station. They've got a couple of guards keeping an eye on it. Is that usually like a permanent structure? Yeah. And you don't see it? No. Where is it usually? Next to the bridge. I like go examine to see if there's like remnants of the toll booth. As you get closer to the strangely stepped pyramid shaped hill, you actually see that it is a stone building that has been entirely grown over with moss and vines and curling ferns and fronds and flowers and ficuses. I love a ficus. Uh, When was the last time you were here? Well, we didn't come this way because we ended up getting driven off the road in the attack. So uh, I haven't been here in a couple of months. That doesn't make sense. Like a couple of months isn't enough time for this to grow over this much, is it? I I mean, no, I'm not I mean, a botanist, but like, no. Should I do like a nature? I have some nature. Yeah. Um, 20. This vegetation, yeah, there's no way this vegetation could have occurred naturally, organically in this time frame. The other thing Barth says is like, now I know just about none of you have ever been down here before, but that lamplighter man, he's not lying. Things get weird in this forest. Real quick, as soon as you turn your back. I've seen stranger things than this. All right. Not that it's not a problem, but I'm not completely flabbergasted, you know what I mean? Can we find the door to this mossy building? Yeah. As you get closer, you get a better sense of the structure. It is a two-story building with a sort of open roof and a kind of awning surrounding it. The direction that faces the road has a heavy wooden door that is almost completely invisible, covered with moss, but after a couple minutes of digging and scraping, you can make out the shape of it. Okay, I push it open. It is heavy and laden with plants, and it scrapes against the ground of the inside of the building, as you do, and Bart says, uh, you just gonna head in there? Yeah, I'm just gonna head in there. Why? Well, it could be dangerous. Are you going by yourself? Well, I got these guys, but it's just a toll booth. I'll go. Can I do a perception check before we go in? Yeah, I, I wish you would. dark vision? Uh, 13. It is difficult to see inside, not only because it's dark, but because it's so, like, overgrown, and the plants inside the building kind of obscured the natural shapes of the room. It does look to be sort of like an office, um, which follows. Olivet, you go in first? Yeah. Okay. So you head inside the door to this uh, toll house station. It is so thickly overgrown on the inside as well as the outside. Each wall, piece of floor, ceiling is all covered mostly again in like mosses, in um, brilliant emerald greens and pale blue grays and deep dusty violet colors. There are ferns sprouting in each corner. There are weird little sort of tubacious, scratchy roots climbing off the walls. It's so dense and thick that even inside, it's hard to make out a sense of what is even in this room. 
So when of you have a torch? I will produce my candle and have a big smile across my tiny face. Uh, probably to your dismay, I'd imagine. Uh, I don't have anything to light it with, though. No, that's not to my dismay. I don't know where you got it. Good job. I got this from uh, that guy. No, don't want to know. <laughs> um, well, I imagine we have, like, we're on a caravan. I'm sure there's yeah. some kind of flint that's sure. on there. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, in fact, uh, Barf, can, you, can I get a light? Barf says, uh, why don't you come here? I don't really want to be over there. Yeah, yeah, oh. sure, sure, okay. You uh, run over to where Barth and Ogman and Granny are sort of like scowling and hunched in a tight little group because they hate stopping, and Barth strikes a match and lights your candle. I run back in. Uh, are you going to go inside the building? Uh, yeah. So in the candlelight, you get a slightly better sense of what's going on. You can see that there is what was a large stately desk once, now it's like a moss sculpture. It's kind of been shoved over to one side of the room. You can see on the back wall, there are really thick, heavy, flowering vines that wrap and coil very tightly around every single brick of the wall. And a little bit further in, you can see a door off to one side. Um, can I go in too? You may. Yeah. You see those things. Great. Um... Slightly better with your dark vision. <laughs> Can I check the desk for a key or a crank or anything useful? Sure. Um, the desk surface is clear or everything's obscured under, again, moss. Real, real big moss kind of zone. There is a drawer on the right hand side, which is locked. I have a feeling the crank is in here. Anyone found a key around? I can bust it open. Okay, I want to try to bust it open with my axe. <laughs> okay, can you make an attack roll? I guess it's like an auto hit to just roll damage. It's three. Three? Yeah. Okay. It's a desk, so. It's a desk, so you <laughs> swing your axe into the drawer of the desk and the front of it splinters. You pull the drawer open. Inside, there is a cluster of small black mushrooms dotted with tiny white spots. And as you pull open the desk drawer and expose these mushrooms to air, they make a sort of <sighs> gasping sound, and a cloud of spores flies up into your face. Make a constitution save. Oh, God. Uh, Traps. No, you're going to be... I, oh, God, that's not great. You're going to be all fungusy now. That is a six. Oh, lordy Lou. Ain't doing too hot. You, have, like, too hot, right? you are dealt three points of poison damage. Also in this drawer is a small leather satchel. I open the satchel and also say, ow. Ow, ow you say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I am the narrator here. I uh, just laugh. <laughs> you laugh as she gets a face full of poison. Well, how bad is it like, just looks like, you know, some spores come and she goes, ah! If it's like that, then yeah. But if she's like, it's like a little <laughs> burn. <laughs> then, then I probably wouldn't laugh. Got it. It's somewhere between those two. <laughs> I want to test your emotional range. And then I might like, <laughs> myself. <laughs> okay. Um, inside the bag are small red berries. Twelve of them. What the f- This isn't a crank. It sure isn't. Do, do you show us the berries, or do you keep it to yourself? Well, presumably you see me fucking rip open this desk with a hatch. With okay, but you, like, do I see- do I know what you found? Sure. Okay. You're not trying to conceal the yeah. berries. Yeah. Um, I would like to- do a, maybe a nature check on these berries. Certainly. Uh, 1819. Can I see those? I shove them into your hand. Mm, want nothing to do with this. You take the satchel of red berries, and as you cup them, Olivet didn't say anything about it, but the satchel feels um, warm to the touch mm. in a sort of uh, actually like a kind of pleasant, soothing way. I love it. It's so pleasant and soothing. Wow, is this Higa? <laughs> <laughs> No? It's okay. What? Like the Danish? I, I, I liked it. Like the Danish cozy? Never mind. Oh, Higa. Is it like, it sounds like Higa or something? Higa. Yeah. Higa. Higa. You hold onto this bag of Higa berries, <laughs> and you know innately that these berries have magical restorative properties. You're not sure how you know. You've never seen berries like this before, mm -hmm. but it's a knowledge that comes to you with complete certainty. And Olivette... You see that the tattoo of the vine that creeps along Juniper's shoulder and up to her cheek is glowing. Ah, oh, what's wrong with you? What do you, what? What do you mean? This Look, is... 
Wait, the, this ordeal on your face. Excuse me? You know, what's wrong with your face? Yeah. Your face is on fire. It's glowing. That tattoo, That's it's doing a weird... I, like, look down. Uh, I guess Indeed. I can, like, pull out yeah. over my shoulder. Certainly, yeah. Yeah. And see it. And I probably... Ah! I pop past the berries back to all of it. Yeah. After a moment, the, the glowing tattoo fades. I grab the berries back. Tattoo. It doesn't glow again. Okay. I look at Olivet and I ask her if she's okay. Yeah, that those are just berries to me. What? But I mean, like, you, that's your face. Am I still taking poison damage? No, uh, not that you are aware of. Oh my god, Cap, your, your face. Okay, Mateo. It's I think I'm hideous. Okay. I want to do that. You know when you push someone away by holding their face? So you can go, why I gotta... <laughs> but now I gotta rape here. <laughs> Not that I'm gonna use it, don't worry. I give you... How many berries do I have? There are 12 berries in the bag. All right. So that's a lot. Oh, you know what? Don't give it to me. I can use second wind. Okay. Great. I'm back to full. Well, Anisha, did you come into the building? I'm standing in the doorway. Love that. What if, what's your take on this uh, farcical turn of events? People are really weird. I don't think you've ever seen Juniper's tattoo glow before. No, I've definitely never seen a glowing tattoo. My brain is like magic and like wary. All right. So you said there's a door in this and there's the desk, the door, the table, and then what was along this back wall? The back wall is covered with very thick, very heavy vines. All right, I would like to investigate those vines and maybe push this glowing face thing to the back of my brain. Sure. Um, Focus make a on the, perception yeah. check. I make or an, investigation, I think, is probably... I'll make an investigation check. Good. I'm better at that. Uh, except I got a 10. A 10? Um, it takes you a couple of minutes, but you see the shape of another door, very hmm. heavily hidden by these thick, thick vines, and they are bound so tightly to the actual frame of the door and the door itself that... Your conclusion is that it would, it's gonna be very difficult to open the store. All right, can I at least try cutting some of these vines with my dagger? Sure, um, they are quite thick. It's sort of like a sawing through them. They're like as thick around as your arm, maybe. Oh, shit. You can do it, but it'll clearly take you a great deal of time. All right, I am get frustrated kind of quickly because I am impatient. 25 XP! <laughs> oh, you get, all of that gets 50 XP for getting poison spores to the face. So I like give up really quickly and go to the door that is accessible. Sure. That door opens to a short staircase that heads downward. Hey, Mateo. Yeah? You have that candle? Yeah. Can you just bring that over here? Maybe. Could you please bring that over here? Yeah. I go over. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, uh, all right, now what? Um, I just want to use the light from the candle to help me see down these stairs. Sure. Um, the stairs are, of course, unsurprisingly, also thickly coated with vegetation. There's like a switchback, like a little tiny mini landing. Um, so you can't see all the way down. Okay. It looks like it leads to a room that would be directly below this one. Does anybody want to check this out with me? Yes. Okay. I descend the stairs. Do you want to go first since you're holding the candle Mateo. I just was just gonna go so whoever's I, I mean I yeah sure I would like to be in the middle and within five feet of both of them so Anisha. that I can use protection they start heading downstairs Ooh. yeah I don't particularly want to be left alone so I'll, I'll take my quarter staff off my back and take up the rear okay um so marching order is Mateo Anish no Mateo Olivet Juniper Anisha. So I would like to ready myself just in case for protection. So I get to react to if anybody within five feet of me gets attacked, they the person takes disadvantage. Doesn't apply to Anisha because she's too far. Sure. So the attacker takes disadvantage, right? Yeah. yeah. No, you do. <laughs> Mateo, you head down the stairs first. You enter a little kind of basement chamber. Again, can you believe it? Completely covered all surfaces with plants. Wow. There is a lot more kind of um, obstruction, as though there were a lot more furniture in here when this happened. 
especially directly in front of you is a big kind of mound that's completely mossed over that's hard to see over. I'd say it rises to about your waist or your chest. From over that mound, um, you are shot. Oh. <laughs> With disadvantage, I suppose. <laughs> is that how that works? Yeah. Okay. What's your AC? Mine? Yeah. Uh, oh wait, I guess I don't have any armor on. Uh, what is what is no armor? 10 plus dex, I think. Oh, okay. Well, then I have 14. That is going to hit. Mateo, you enter into the basement and a large uh, stone is fired from a sling and brains you for four damage. Okay. You turn and you see a strange figure. It looks like it's made out of the same kinds of materials that are covering the interior and exterior of the building. Its clothing looks like woven moss. Its skin looks like mottled tree bark. It has patchy, leafy hair, and it's holding a slingshot. And as soon as it lands its shot, it ducks back down behind this hill. I had a clear look at that thing. Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, you're in dim candlelight, but as clear as you can hope for in the circumstances. Uh, okay, uh, slightly losing my mind, I'd run back upstairs. Okay. This is some Lovecraftian uh, cosmic horror stuff for me. You run back up the stairs onto the landing. You see Olivet and Juniper. You now have a matching uh, head lump to match the cap. Run! And I try and push past them and just, like, exit this entire place. We should probably roll initiative. Okay. So we'll say Mateo took his turn to flee out of the building. Yeah, so um, 60 feet, I guess, if we're doing this. Okay, Augment starts jogging over. Says, are you okay? Uh, there's trouble down there. Help, please. We need help. I don't know what it was. It was something... I've never seen anything like it at, at all. Okay, quit crying. I'm not crying. Just go look. Go back to the wagon. I go back to the wagon. Anisha. I, I feel protective. I have darts. Your mood ring is set to protective. You look yes. down. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm feeling. You can't see the figure. Oh. Um, but as you move in, you do see the second one. Great. That has moved forward now that Matei has been chased out of the room. So that one's conceivably within range. Okay. I think I think I like look for the one that that shot him and then the other one kind of surprises me and I like panic and throw. 18. That's a hit. So can no one see right now? Uh you are a half elf and you have dark vision. Yes? Me? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see kind of. Okay. Well, that does 5 damage. Okay. That was a dart. Yes. Do you fling it in panic and surprise at the second creature? It almost sort of blows a hole in its chest with the speed at which you throw it, like uh, crumpled leaves and grass kind of fly out, and it slumps back against the wall, unmoving. Juniper, it's your turn. All right. Um, I have no fighting ability, so I think I'm going to just like sneak in and do a little perception check just to see if I can suss out the situation a bit better. Is there anything specific you're looking for? I'm looking for hazards. I'm looking for anything beyond these two. Like, is there another dude here? And I'm also like looking for the things we were looking for before. So a keys, levers. Dark vision squad. 21. Okay, so you bust into this room and take a look around. You see that Anisha has just dispatched one of these strange planty creatures. Um, which you've obviously never seen before in your life. They are quite frightening Sorry, to look at. Sorry, that was a at. 20 in case that was not a 21. In case that... You don't see <laughs> shit. No, you still see all of that. You kind of get a better sense of what sort of room you're in. This looks like it might have been a barracks or sleeping quarters for whoever manned this toll house. You see this big giant mound in front of you and you can tell that it is a wardrobe that has been mm -hmm. toppled over and sort of left to mulch. At the far end of the room, it's difficult to get a sense of the details, but you can see what look like maybe a couple of old cots. I think I ran my turn. Okay. It is Bad Girls Club turn. Um, here's what happens. This one pops up over the mound, and it, can you believe it, shoots Anisha with a shot from its sling. That do hit three points of damage to Anisha. It then pops back down behind the mound. The second one gets back up. Grass and leaves and mulch start flowing up its body and start filling the hole, the cavity that you made in the center of it. And it is going to move forward and attack you. Mm. That's a miss, though. Great. I hate it. 
Sure. Ogman, <laughs> um, also Mateo, you can see him head inside cautiously and draw a light crossbow as he moves into the room. Well, it's your turn, Mateo. You're back at the wagon, I suppose. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, you know, uh, contemplating what uh, what I just saw. Uh, that's uh, definitely going to throw me for a loop. And Barth and Granny are asking you what's in there and what's going on. Uh, it's a plant per... It's, uh, uh... That was about six seconds, I think. Yeah, all of it, it's your turn. I can't see shit right now. I don't have dark vision. And Mateo took the candle out. <laughs> Fucked me over, absolutely. So I'm gonna stand in front of and between Anisha and Juniper. Yeah, just as long as I'm within five feet, I'm gonna keep my protection going and I'm gonna just kind of yell to try to get their attention. Basically try to taunt these bad guys. Got it. Like, ah, I hate plants. <laughs> ooh, ooh, getting personal, cutting close. Anisha, it's your turn. Uh, the dart didn't work and now it's in my face, so I'm gonna punch it. Mm-hmm. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, you hit it. Roll your damage. Of course you hit it. Three? You punch it, and its face kind of <clears throat> sinks in where your fist meets it, because it doesn't have a lot of structural integrity. Yeah. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to punch it again. Love that. Because I can do that. And that's not very good. How bad is it? It's an eight. That uh -huh. is not very good. Juniper? So you're sneaking over here, so I'm moving, um, I guess, ten feet. Sure. So I'm right next to the um, wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I want to try and push it over onto this guy. It's it's it has been pushed over and it's like flat. You could try to like lift it. You could try to how, lift it. How heavy does it look? Because I have no strength. It's pretty large, and more than that, it is like part of the moss carpet. Then instead, I'm gonna go move to the same spot, which is also moving me towards um, the guy who Anisha is currently. Fighting. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do him a stab with my dag. Love a dag stab. So it's an 18. Okay, that hits. Where are your damage? Uh, one. He falls to the ground um, after you cut a huge swath down his front. Nice. Yeah. This one, can you believe it, is gonna pop up and try to shoot. I think probably Olivet, who's screaming and, and getting attention. And that is a hit. For four points of damage. Okay. The other one, moss and dirt and fern start coiling itself around the huge stab wound along its front, and it rises back to its feet and tries to claw at Juniper. Cool. And it misses. Appreciate that. Olivet, it's your turn. Still can't see, and I don't think that they're going to stop regenerating, but I can't see that. You can attack with disadvantage at a creature you can't see? Like, it's possible? Okay, sure. Let's, can I move into this corner, like, beside both Anisha and number two? Here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, yeah, I guess I'll attack with disadvantage. Okay. That definitely didn't hit. What was it? Five. Okay, yeah, that does not hit. Um, are you gonna do anything else? Yell. I hate plants still! Still hating plants. Uh, and Mateo, anything? Uh, I'm pr I'm pretty much I'm not coming back in this combat probably so <laughs> unless some weird force brings me to. Sure, Ogman now makes it down the stairs, and he sees what the three of you are crowded around as best he can in the gloom. Curses, and runs back up the stairs. <laughs> Thanks, Og. What? Where are you? Says I'll be right back. I don't believe you. Anisha. Punching more punching. Okay. Maybe I will punch and kick it. Find out, because it keeps getting up. Oh, no, that was really bad. You missed the first hit. Yeah. I don't know, 14. That hits. Five. You kick its head off. Nice. And it slumps to the ground. Juniper, it's your turn. Yeah, instead of keeping on stabbing the same guy that um, Anisha's attacking, I'm gonna run over and stab um, the guy who's hiding behind the wardrobe throwing Rocks, yeah. Rocks. Yeah. So you uh, hustle past this wardrobe and you see the other little figure crouch behind readying his sling for another shot. And I roll a... Oof, that's a one. That does okay. not hit. I will tell you that um, since you've made it this far back here, you do see um, a couple of cots where people were sleeping on one of the cots. And you have, you have dark vision, so you can make this out reasonably well. 
there is a figure of a human, the body of a human, Oof. that has been sort of um, strangled with vines. There is also a wooden case in the corner next to this um, creature. I scream. I have not seen a dead body before. Yeah, it's and it's a it's a ghoulish one. I'll yeah. say. Now it's monster turn. Mateo, Ogman runs up to the wagon and he says, "Give me that candle." Right now. Oh my god, now. Please, now. Okay, I give him the candle. He turns and runs back toward the building. And the other two attack. Yeah. Okay. And there's a disadvantage on attacks against Anisha, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, they still hit both of you. Goddamn. Sucks to suck. Yeah, no kidding. This is my official kind of DM stance on this. Um... Anisha, you take seven points of damage as the one you've uh, dropped over and over and over again gets back up and gets close enough to rake um, kind of weird, sharp, thorny claws against your chest. I'm unconscious. Love that energy. Um, get some stakes going, I think. Sizzling. And Juniper, you take two points of damage as the one that you surprised lashes out at you. I still can't see. Um... I'll take a, a disadvantaged attack. I mean, you also watch me fall unconscious beside you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Can I, like, at least tackle this number two thing? Because clearly attacking it's not working. You can tackle it with disadvantage. I feel like it'd be the same kind of issue where you can't see it super well. Yeah, that's true. Let's just attack it regularly. Okay. <laughs> it's 14. Oh, that hits. It's a 1d8... Plus it's four. a nine. You chop it to bits with your axe, and it falls once again in the same square it's been tying in over <laughs> and over. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, are you doing anything else on your turn? Continue to yell. Okay. And also maybe, where is that crank? Because I am the only one who cannot see in here. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Mateo, anything to say? Uh, nope, just sitting there. Anisha, you need to make a... Uh, Saving throw against death. Succeed. Nice. Yay. You are 33% less dead, if I understand this mechanic correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Juniper? Um, so there's a box there, right? Mm-hmm. And a cowering thingy. Yeah, I'm going to go for the box. Okay. You open this unlocked box. You see two torches packed away neatly. You see two lengths of rope, and tucked into the corner is a small brass key. The tip of the key, where all the key parts are, teeth, oh mm -hmm. my god, I used to know English, is soaked in a goopy pink substance. I sniff it. Okay. It sniffs uh, sort of sharply. It's, it's got a sort of uh, scoury, acidic smell to it. Maybe instead of sniffing it, I, um... Don't say you lick it. I guess you could lick it if you want to. <laughs> yeah. No, I... Who, who do you think I am? Can I, like, arcana? I would ask for nature. Nature? This I looks can... like an organic. Okay, so I'm gonna do a nature check. sustainable goo. Uh, 19, 20, 21. Um, it's so apparent that across the room, Juniper's face tattoo is glowing. It, she's like a walking flashlight. That's and helpful. And you can see the strange glow as she holds up a key and reaches out and touches this pink goo that is smeared across the front of the key. And Juniper, the stuff on the tip of the key is like an antifungal substance. Hmm. I will say that uh, until Juniper's next turn, this room can be considered to have low light. Yes. Um... And, yeah, are you going to move at all? Um, maybe I'll just step away from okay. number one. You would incur an attack of opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Which hits you. Four! Six points of <laughs> damage as you back away from this monster. Yikes! Mistakes I've made. So I'm at... Two. Love this first party-wide combat. I think it's going swimmingly. <laughs> uh, it is the monster's turn. Um... Can I yell something? Yeah. I think we can get out of here. <laughs> okay. Let's get out of cool. here. I feel like we don't have to do the murder. I found the stuff. There you go. The first thing that happens is that Ogman bursts down to the bottom of the stairway. He is holding a candle in one hand 
and a bolt from his crossbow in the other, just a single bolt. And he says, move aside. And he pushes past you. He dips the crossbow bolt, which has been wrapped in a stray swap of cotton, into the candle flame. And as it lights, he plunges the bolt on fire into the corpse of the plant creature. It sort of catches instantly, and the thing chars and shrivels, and in a second becomes a pile of soot. And he looks up and he says, uh, fire helps. Now the other one is still alive, and it's going to try to go for Juniper some more. I sure hope it doesn't. It does not. Yay! (laughs) Um, Okay, those are some turns. Uh, Olivette? Um, Can I take the candle from Ogman, by any chance? He says, do you have anything yourself? No. A light source? No. Is there any of you? I have a torch. Can I light these torches, though? Um, it might be easier to do, like, off of his candle or, like, up in the daylight, yeah. but, like, hypothetically, yes. Can I, like, throw a torch at her off my turn? You um, can do it on your turn. You can okay. tell him that you have a torch now. I have a torch! Yeah, and you also probably want to tell him that you have, like, an assailant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Okay, well, rather than that happening, then, because that's an ordeal. <laughs> Word of the day. <laughs> Let's just come up to this guy, and now I can attack him without disadvantage. Yeah, you got some glow juice going. Let's use that glow juice. Natural 20. <laughs> hey, what is this? I roll and uh, double it? Yep, you just double the n- number that you roll on the die. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot. One times two is two. Plus uh, strength so modifier? Six. Sure, you take that one down. You axe it from top to bottom. Great. I think that means we are out of combat. So Ogman runs over with the candle and the bolt, and plunges it into this creature's body as well. Nice. Anisha's body continues to lay unconscious Can near I the doorway. feed them a berry? You uh, squeeze Anisha's jaw and open their mouth, pop a berry in, and simulate chewing, and rub the throat for a swallow. Just one berry? Yeah, I don't totally know what they do. No, yeah, sure. Um, Anisha, you are restored one point of health. Amazing. You are conscious. And, uh, grievously injured. Correct. (laughs) We have no means of healing, eh? Uh, we can take a rest. Or maybe let's ask Granny if she has something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you also have the rest of that bag of berries. All right. I run upstairs. Someone say no means of healing. (laughs) Oh, I guess this key is for that drawer that you smashed open. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The Um, fungus side would have, you know, made the mushroom inactive. Okay. Mm. So that would have just, like, prevented that. You know, it was a learning experience. <laughs> All right. Um, I call for Ogden. Ogman, uh, Ogman sorry. follows you right back up the stairs, and he says, uh, Yeah, I've seen, I've seen similar things. Some of these uh, creatures can regenerate themselves. Uh, so fire, typically, is what I'd like to do. Did you find the crank? Uh, no, but do you think you could um, light this? I point to the vines that are covering that door in the back. Uh, says, do, you think uh, you, do you think that would work? Yeah, we can try it. Just kind of help me out here. And um, the two of you head to the back wall, and you sort of are trying to do a, like a bit of a controlled burn, because your goal is not to set the entire interior yeah. of this room on fire. I mean, it's, it's like fresh plant material. It's not like it's dry and, and catchy, but um, the fire helps kind of shrivel certain points of it, and then you're able to hack more efficiently with the dagger, and in about a minute or two, uh, you have cleared a door-sized space that contains one metric door. That was Many Realms, and I promise it gets better to listen to. Just really keep going there. We figure it out in like a week or two. Don't even worry about it. We are a brand new podcast, and we're really thrilled to have you as part of our journey. Please spread the word if you liked what you heard. Let people know about the show. We cannot afford to pay for advertisements, so it's really up to you. And I hope you look forward to the next episodes. This campaign is really exciting, and there's a lot of twists and turns coming up just around the bend. 